What a difference a few days makes. Or should I say, what a difference a few cases of coronavirus make. It seemingly changes everything. In the state of New South Wales and Premier Gladys Berejiklian, well, they've gone from being the virus management gold standard to lockdown purveyors of panic. And she's even getting lectures from Daniel Andrews in Victoria on how to handle it. And let's remember, his government's mismanagement of coronavirus in Victoria led to 820 people dying from or with this virus. Now, need I point out that almost every death has occurred in high-risk groups, the elderly, the obese and those with comorbidities. For the rest of us, well, the vast majority will have mild or no symptoms if we happen to catch it. And then we can go to my home state of South Australia, where the previous panic merchants were. Premier Marshall and Professor Spurrier, who locked down an entire state over a strain of coronavirus they told us was more deadly and more contagious than ever before, but it didn't actually exist. Well, political insiders tell me that they wanted to do the same last week when the only cases of COVID in SA were actually in hotel quarantine. Now, apparently the police commissioner, who has the final say on these matters in South Australia, said no. Well, frankly, that's the right call by the commissioner. But the fact that the final say on running a state is in the hands of an officer of the law rather than an elected premier actually says a lot about the abrogation of leadership. Still, I prefer a sober, sensible head calling the shots more than a panicked politician who happens to have both eyes on the polls. Nick Cater wrote for The Australian today and he summed it up very well. Fear has infected our leaders. He also made some very pointed comments about the state of South Australia. In 2019, influenza was ripping through the state, including in 86 nursing homes. There were 20,000 cases and on a single day, 37 people died from the flu, bringing the total death toll to 82. The chief health officer, the same health officer we've got now, Professor Spurrier, said, and I quote, it's very unfortunate to see this number of people that have died. And she told South Australians to wash their hands and cough into their elbows to keep them safe. Cato writes, the killer flu of 2019 claimed more than 800 lives in Australia, most of them elderly and most in nursing homes. Yet the authorities refrained from panic. There were no daily press conferences and there no breathless reporting of the latest number of infections, which in New South Wales alone were averaging 826 a day in the first two weeks of July. So, why the fear porn being pushed by our politicians now? It's all about the Delta variant. Well, the new Delta variant doesn't seem, does seem, I should say, to be more infectious, but it's actually less deadly, just like the flu. And we've actually learned to live with the flu, haven't we? There's no flu passport, there's no mandatory jab, just a modicum of common sense and a request that people consider the health of themselves and others in their decision making. Most people have a very, very, very low chance of dying from either the flu or from COVID-19. We are going to have to learn to live with them both for the foreseeable future. And don't pretend that vaccinating is going to eradicate it either as the vaccines won't fully protect those who get them. The experts tell us that vaccination will likely reduce the severity of symptoms. And the same experts still say you can catch the virus and pass it on even if you're vaccinated. In other words, you'll still have to use common sense and take reasonable precautions with your health and those of others. So things have indeed changed when it comes to COVID-19. Not only in the past few days, but actually over the past year. Remember back in February 2020, we were dealing with a new and largely unknown virus. And as Nick Cater wrote today, cognitive bias has been allowed to set based on assumptions made in the early months of the crisis when the risks of the virus in a country unprepared for a pandemic were far greater than they are today. Well, as it stands today, we do have the knowledge and we have the resources to make more prudent decisions in balancing the health risks with our economic necessities and with our liberties.